The beloved Grid franchise was rebooted back in 2019 and it had fairly good reviews and reception at the time. But was it worth all of the hype? And is it worth it in 2021? What's up everyone and welcome to a new video, my name is Omar with Real Gamer Review and today I'll be reviewing Great 2019 in 2021. Also before diving deeper, if you haven't subscribed yet and you check below, I'm right on that 1000 subscribers marker. It could be you actually that tips me over. Hit that subscribe button, it would be hugely appreciated and hopefully we can hit that 1000 subscribers. Also I've provided links for the game different versions at a discounted price, make sure to check it out. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Developed by Codemasters, which is the studio behind other famous franchises like Formula One and Dirt series, Grid 2019 emphasizes the concept of racing disciplines, but first thing you will notice that it has a bit weird handling when it comes to the cars. Definitely it's not a racing sim, it is very arcadey, but maybe a bit too much for my taste. Like most of the cars, feels a bit slippery when cornering, if you know what I mean. Anyways, probably that's only me, but I thought of mentioning it. For sure, there might be other people out there that likes this kind of handling. Don't get me wrong, each car will feel different while driving, but still, most of them feels a bit more slippery compared to other racing games in the same genre. I always have the feeling that most cars oversteers a bit while playing this game. Anyways, since we got the handling out of the way, this game has 6 main different categories of racing modes. Touring, Stock, Tuner, GT, FA Racing and Invitational. During career mode, the player picks a particular event in one of these categories. With each event, which is a string of races, making up a championship. Each discipline features different cars and race types. Those events mainly contain standard races, time attack events, time trials, and point-to-point -point sprint races. Pretty basic stuff for a game in its category. Nothing amazing or out of the ordinary. The game features a new system called Nemesis, and probably as you might have guessed from the name, this system will make the AI drivers aggressive towards you if you hit them too hard or too often. As part of this, there are 400 unique AI drivers, each with their own racing style. This is of course as per the developers of the game, but honestly, after playing the game a lot, I didn't feel that it had that big amount. Yes, some AI drivers might act differently, but that is in rare occasions and won't be happening in every race. As for the different difficulties in this game, this part gets a bit weird and that's because of the hot lap system that this game has. Let me explain. So before every race, there is a hot lap where the racer with the fastest time on the track for one lap will be the first on the grid line. So on easy, medium and hard difficulties, if you got the fastest lap and start in the first position and if you did your corners correctly during the race, you will always stay in first position and win the race. It only gets a bit challenging at the very hard difficulty, but it only gets challenging in the lap times. So it will be a bit of a challenge to start the race in first position. But still, if you are in third or fourth position at the beginning, it is very manageable to win the race. So if you have any experience in racing games, I would recommend going for the very hard difficulty. And since we mentioned the difficulty, you can also choose from the options menu how many times you can get during the race the famous magic feature of returning back in time if you must up on the track. You can choose from 1 to 5 times, infinite number of times, or totally disable it. Also, this game has a total wreck in its destruction system if you had a big accident. So make sure you have one of those return in time feature handy just in case. Now for the most important aspect of the game, the cars. The game has a total number of 66 cars with the option of adding 16 more if you purchase the DLCs which is kind of disappointing to be honest as the number is a bit low. Especially if we compare it to other racing games released in the past few years with some games like Forza Horizon 4 going up to 450 different cars. Also another point worth mentioning that I didn't like that much that most cars in the game are pre-customized from a visual perspective, from the exterior and the interior. And the interior is actually the point that kind of annoyed me because I always like to play most racing games from the interior camera view. So the customization makes the interior view of the cars a bit boring. 
I am more into Forza Motorsport, Horizon, Gran Turismo games as they make their interior almost a copy of real life. Coming to the tracks, the main emphasis is on real world permanent circuits which make up the majority of the courses in the game. These range from classics such as Brands Hatch, Silverstone, Indianapolis to more modern facilities like the Sydney Motorsport Park, Sepang and Zhejiang International Circuit. City location with fictionally lined but mostly real world streets of San Francisco, Shanghai, Barcelona, Havana and the fictional point to point tracks. There are a few more tracks in the DLCs as well but unfortunately the number is a bit low as well with the total of 15 tracks. The game has 99 different configurations for most of the tracks, but still, after a while playing the game, you will feel that most of the tracks are visually familiar. And since we mentioned the customization, there are no visual customization features in this game except for deliveries, which are not a lot as well. As for the car upgrades, they are missing from the game as well, except for a very basic tuning feature that you can adjust for each car before races. Next we have the weather conditions and day and night cycle. Thankfully this game has both, but they are not dynamic. So basically, if you start a race at night with raining weather conditions, the race will stay the same till its end. Not like some other racing games, which the conditions can change dynamically during the race. This game mainly has morning, sunset and night for the different cycles, and for the weather conditions it's only clear and rainy. The snow is missing as well from this game. The multiplayer has three main modes which are quick match, custom match and session search, and all three are pretty basic and self-explanatory from their name. All three modes will contain the same racing types from the single player different modes, of course with the difference of playing it with real players. The game has good multiplayer options but unfortunately it's kind of dead in 2021. I tried playing a quick match on PC and I just kept waiting, waiting and waiting. Until I got bored and left. I tried the multiplayer on the Xbox Series X and it was slightly better as I found another player that entered the session with me. And after almost 3 minutes of waiting, the game decided to put AI players for the rest of the racers as no other real players entered the session. So it was me and another player with 14 AI players. And as you might have guessed, during the first lap all 14 AI players were behind us and technically only the two of us were racing. Despite the few negative points that I mentioned earlier, the visuals, lighting and reflections are pretty good in this game and it is considered a huge upgrade compared to its predecessor Grid Autosport that was released back in 2014. I want to talk specifically about the lighting conditions that this game has, as it's pretty good especially if you are racing in dusk or dawn. The sun visuals and reflections are pretty good and very realistic, but sometimes it's a bit too realistic. As in some of the tracks, at dusk time when you are racing with the interior camera and the sun is directly facing you, you won't be able to see anything on the track till the next corner. But other than that, the graphics and visuals are pretty good especially on PC with a very good optimization as it doesn't need a very demanding PC specs to run it on high or ultra settings. Even on last gen consoles it looks pretty good and it runs at 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. And of course it's playable on PS5 and Xbox series with backwards compatibility. As always with the Codemaster Studio, they are pretty good when it comes to the audio part in their racing games and they definitely kept the same level in this game as well. Codemasters did an exceptional job as always to portray each car sound, they even went a bit further to portray other car different sounds beside the engines which you can hear clearly through corners. I won't be able to explain that part in words so I think it will be better to leave you with a short clip to listen to it yourselves.
Codemasters created something good for this grid reboot, a pretty solid game that you'll definitely enjoy playing, but a few downsides kind of stops it from reaching greatness and having a place beside other great racing games out there. While playing the game, you will constantly get the feeling that it should have a bit more stuff compared to its premium price tag. So I wouldn't recommend buying this game at full price and try to get it at a discount. And it's your lucky day. As I mentioned before, I've provided links in the description below for the game different versions at a discounted price. Make sure to check it out. Alright, time to wrap this up, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video or you learned something then leave a like, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.